class. Welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this particular video, we are going to explore yet another U substitution integration example. But this time, things are going to get a little more difficult, not much, but a little more difficult because what's going to happen is we're going to be off by a constant. You'll see what I mean by that phrase here just coming up. But we're going to start this particular problem like we started the other problems, which is trying to make sense of what we're given in the integrand so we can identify what would the best U possibly be. And in the last videos, we saw that the best U was in fact the inside function for that composition function. So if you can identify what the inside function is here in this integrand, then you know what your U should be. Okay, so we look very closely here. I see I have the integral of t times e to the t squared plus one. That whole t squared plus one is in the exponent of that e to the power. And then multiply by dt, of course. All right, so I see, hopefully you do too, that the power yet again is the inside function. This time though, t squared plus one is the power. So let's let that be our u. So we have u is equal to t squared plus one. Just like before, we're going to take the derivative of this statement here. So now we have du equals two t dt. Don't forget the dt part. Anytime we're taking the derivative here, we definitely have to have the du on the left side and the d whatever on the right side for whatever letter you have as the input in your initial integrand. So du equals two times t times dt. All right, now I look really carefully at the integrand that I was given and I scour all the parts that I have here and I notice I have a t, okay, that's great. I have a t right here, awesome. I also have a dt hanging out here. I have a dt, awesome. What I don't have is a two. So this is what I mean by off by a constant. We would have just a perfect exchange, like in the last examples, if in fact I didn't have a two sitting here. But I gotta deal with that, no biggie. Here's how we deal with it. We come back to this problem here and we say, we really just want the t and the dt part, this part right here. That's all we want to have remaining. So since I'm multiplying by the two, let's go ahead and divide both sides by that two and kind of put it on the other side, if you will. So if I go ahead and divide this expression by two, well, I gotta divide the other side by the same two. Well, the twos on the right-hand side divide out, so I'm left with what I wanted to be left with, a t times dt. On the left-hand side, let's go ahead and write this du over two in this way, one-half times du. Okay. I have a reason for that. I like when I have a fraction like this with some expression involving letters over some number, it's really often advantageous for us if we go ahead and just pull that quantity out front. And you'll see why that will be really helpful in just a moment. And these two are equivalent. du over two is the same thing as one half times a du. So now I have an exact exchange here that I can exchange out the t and the dt, this whole expression here, but in its place, instead of just a du that I'll put in, I'll put the whole one half du in its place. So go back up to the problem and we are going to rewrite our integrand here. So we have the integral of, well, again, t dt gets exchanged out for one half du. Let me put that at the end here times one half du. I tend to put my d whatevers, right, towards the end, the back end of the integrand. So that's why I'm gonna choose to do that. So those have been exchanged out. What's left though is still this e to the power, but I can't use t squared plus one. In its place, I'll put in my u. So I have e to the u. So again, I have now a new integrand all with respect to u's, no more x's remaining, and I just exchange things out in such a way that I had just expressions with u's remaining. 
All right, so here's one thing. Let me let me clean this up here before we get going. So we have the integral now of, we would typically write this as say, put the constant out, out right here in front of this piece of the integrand. So one half e to the u du. And maybe that helps you recognize that in fact, one of the properties for integrals allows us to take that one half even further. We can take it all the way out of the integral symbol. We're allowed to do that with constants and only constants. So we'll take the one half and put it out front next. So we have one half times the integral of e to the u du. And now we've seen several times already the integral of e to the u, well, that's our favorite, E, integral of e to the u is just e u, so we have now one half that's still out front times the integral of e to the u, that's just e to the u. Of course, because I didn't have boundaries on my integral, I have to add my c here at this stage, and we also have to bring back what we know u to be, which is t squared plus one. So plug that in, we have one half e to the t squared plus one, plus C in the end. So this is how to tackle an example that still involves U substitution for which I had this extra constant here that I had to deal with. And we just dealt with that by dividing over and then ultimately we're able to pull out that constant right out front of the integral. It doesn't completely go away, it still hangs out in our, our final answer. So I hope you enjoyed this particular video. In the next video, we'll see another example of use substitution where some of this same kind of process here comes up yet again. Don't forget, please click on the Advantage logo at the bottom to subscribe. Thanks.